The next item in the MyNavNet menu is the number of hot pages that can be selected in the display carousel. Now, Dean dealt with this in an earlier video, so I'll refer you to that video for details. But as we access this menu, we'll look at hot page. The default is five. We can select up to 10. And to show you an example of that, I'll back out of this menu, select cancel, cancel, and cancel again to come to my operating screen. When I push my display key, it will bring up my carousel of hot page selections. And here you can see that there are five hot pages available. I'll cancel there, press my menu button to come back into the My MyNavNet menu. And I'll change the hot page number from five to 10. I'll exit this menu. And as I hit the display key again, we can see that we have a full carousel of 10 hot pages to choose from. The next MyNavNet menu item that we'll address is the boat icon. We've created customizable boat icons so that if you want to have a very simplified icon or if you want to have something a little bit more appropriate for your actual boat type, we can display that as your boat icon on screen. In this case, we can see as I zoom in that we've selected a sport fishing boat icon. As I access the MyNavNet menu, we'll see that we have a number of icons to choose from, from a simplified icon or a basic wedge or arrow to commercial fishing, a motorboat, sailboat, sport fishing, or super yacht. These can be changed any number of times. The last major menu item that we'll deal with in the MyNavNet menu is that of the demo file. And this generally doesn't pertain to the user. There are two different ways to offer demonstration or demo mode. We're using an internal demonstration mode here for the purpose of these videos. For the users, that demo mode will be off. The other significant information that we can get from our MyNavNet menu are system ID, information about chart server and the MFD type, whether the MFD is a master or slave, which we've dealt with in other videos. The system ID is critical in order to maintain data and especially for ordering additional charts for the system that may not be included. In the upper right hand corner, the last piece of information is the version. This is the software version that the operating system is using for this particular MFD. In this segment, we're going to address some of the changes that can be made in our global tab. The global menus are those settings which apply to the entire system's operation. So let's take a look at some of those. As I push my menu key now to access global, you'll hear the factory default key beat. That's the first thing that we'll address. When I enter my menu, the top line is the key beat. Many people prefer this to be off. As you can see, it's highlighted in green. When I push enter, it'll go to gray, and now it's turned off. The next topic is font size. Font size is global. This is the size of the fonts that are represented both in the roto key as well as in the data boxes and elsewhere on screen. In the black box, they can be selected from small, medium, or large. In the 8 inch and 12 inch displays, they can be selected between medium and large. Please note that it does require rebooting the equipment to enable that change. After font size is day and night mode. I can select a brightness level for day, dusk, night, and bright sunlight. For daytime viewing and sunlight viewing, you'll see a little bit of variation. For dusk, the screen will dim slightly. For nighttime, the screen will dim significantly. Note that the brilliance control still applies to each of these background settings. After day and night mode, is a selection for great circle navigation. This can either be selected or deselected. When selected using great circle navigation, we're essentially choosing the shortest distance between two points on the globe. If it's deselected or grayed out, 
then we're selecting to navigate using rum line navigation or a constant bearing line. After great circle navigation, we have bearing display. That can be selected between magnetic or true relative to own vessel position and heading. After bearing display comes our position format. There are four options for position format. We have lat long with no decimals, lat long with decimals, which would be the default or traditional display. We can also display position in Loran CTDs. We also have a setting for MGRS, or Military Grid Reference System, for those government operators. After position format, we can show Loran C station and GRI. This is where we would customize the Loran interface for those navigators that are still using a Loran and possibly combination GPS on their vessel. In time zone, we can set the offset from Zulu time so that we have an accurate depiction of time on screen as compared to Greenwich Mean Time. We can select or deselect daylight savings time as the time changes throughout the year. The final setting is the TLL output with MOB or target lat long with man overboard. When a man overboard waypoint is selected, we have a choice to either send or not send that information to external devices. So if I have another navigation device, for example, another chart plotter, in addition to my Navnet 3D on my boat, I can provide that target lat long waypoint to another device to ensure that I can return to that man overboard position. You'll note that in the course of this video, I'm doing most of the demonstration on our black box model here to my right. On my left, with our 12 inch and 8 inch displays, there is one menu option in the global settings that's important to note as well. This has to do with the viewing angle of the display. Note that for the 12 inch and 8 inch displays, that there are five settings for selecting the viewing angle. There is most upward, upward, normal, downward, and most downward. These settings will be changed depending upon the orientation of the LCD toward the user out of installation.